When I was running trying to super high one night on my suit up chair with a four nine. I can't catch it because I'm the king of the blue shine here, but it's running red. Hi, I'm Anthony Fisher with Reason TV, and we're here with Jamie Joyce, the author of Moonshine, A Cultural History of America's Infamous Liquor. Jamie, thanks so much for joining thanks us. Thanks for having me. A lot of people think of moonshine as like prohibition era. Mm. What exactly is moonshine? Moonshine is a clear, unaged whiskey. Generally, it's made from corn, although it's been used, but people will use anything that ferments, you know, historically they've used just about anything. But generally, it's been corn. Um, it's also been barley, it's also been rye, so a grain that's steeped, unaged. A lot of times people will call moonshine whiskey without the wood or bourbon without the barrel. Where did moonshine originate? And it's always kind of been associated with law breaking. Can you like separate some of the myths from the reality? Yeah, moonshine has a long history in the United States. It came with settlers from, from Europe. You know, So you had a lot of Scots-Irish coming to this country, bringing these traditions with them. And many of them settled in Western Pennsylvania. And so you had a real um, movement going on there where, and we can't really call it moonshining at the time because it was legal to make this whiskey, but it was this was before a time that it was taxed. So when the government in 1791 Put the uh, impose the distilled spirits tax. Then we started to get people who were saying, oh, "Hey, wait a second! This is not cool. What are you trying to do?" Moving forward a little, sure. uh, prohibition ended in the 30s, but then there was more prohibition of moonshine itself. Can you talk a little bit about that? You know, after prohibition, a lot of times people think, well, suddenly the nation could drink again. Well, that's not entirely true. There were still many places throughout this country, and there are still places today that are dry. So in some states, we even have dry counties, wet counties, and within a dry county, wet cities, you know, so there's this real um, holdover or a hangover, perhaps, from Prohibition. So still, you, ha you had these communities where this was making this clear unaged whiskey, liquor. This was also part of cultural heritage. This wasn't just a way to make money, although it was a very good way for many people to make money. And people it was who, very prominent in Appalachia. Absolutely, very prominent in Appalachia. But because liquor was still expensive, because jobs were scarce, we were leading into the Great Depression. So there were still people who needed to make money, and they relied on this family tradition of making moonshine. So this was a big economic driver for a lot of people. They kept families afloat. They kept put food on the table. Can you talk a little bit about the struggles for moonshiners yes. trying to go legitimate? Yes. Well, in back in you know, and we're talking in the in the 1800s, the mid to late 1800s, there wasn't really a movement for for moonshiners to go legitimate. They were trying to continue their efforts to make their liquor without being detected by the law. And so it was a real cat and mouse game between revenuers and moonshiners. And revenuers were the revenue agents. And these were federal agents that came into play in the, I believe it was 1861, where we had our first income tax. And t liquor was taxed. And if you weren't paying that tax, you could be arrested. Can you talk a little bit about how moonshining led to the rise of NASCAR, which is uh, apparently America's most popular spectator sport? All of, you had all these people in the South who were coming up as whiskey trippers. That's what they called the drivers. So they were some of the most skilled drivers around. And so it was just natural that they would become involved in NASCAR. Um, one of the people that I write about in my book, Moonshine, is a man that many people, NASCAR fans, would know, Junior Johnson. And Junior Johnson was one of the first inductees in the NASCAR Hall of Fame. Now, Junior Johnson, as a young man, starting at about age 14, helped his father with his moonshine whiskey business. So he was one of these guys who would go out at 14 years old, pre-driver's license, but he knew how to drive, and he would deliver the liquor to people. So he knew how to drive fast and skillfully because the law was after him all the time. Thanks so much for talking to us. Jamie Joyce, the author of Moonshine, A Cultural History of America's Infamous Liquor for Reason TV. I'm Anthony Fisher.